What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we get into today's video, which is over the Trans Am here, I just have to really thank you guys. We just hit recently, I think it was Wednesday, I made a community post on like the community uh, tab on the channel if you uh, go check that out. I made a post, you know, of the day we hit 1,000 subscribers. And well, that's pretty much what I'm here to talk about. So we just hit 1,000 subscribers. And I know in the modern day of YouTube, that is not like astronomical. It's not uncommon for people to have, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of subscribers. But the fact that we managed to get 1,000 of you guys to subscribe to the channel is just absolutely insane. And I thank you very much for that. I don't really know what else to say besides thank you. I guess this is a good time to tell uh, new viewers if you're just coming to the channel and if you've been a part of the channel for a while to kind of catch you up to speed not only on this car but on the rest of the fleet. So pretty much I'm going to be doing like a list rundown real quick of all the cars and my ambitions or intentions, whatever you want to call it, uh, for those cars. So we'll start off with the OG to the channel, my 2006 Monte Carlo SS, that if you guys do not know, about four years ago, no, be five, my God, five years ago, 2019, we pulled the, um, we pulled the engine cradle out of the bottom. It got, it's windy as hell out there right now. We did cam, we did head work, we had the head sent off to a machine shop. They got some head work done. Um, better springs, uh, obviously new valves. Just freshened up the top end mainly. We didn't touch the bottom end. We did, um, like I said, we did a cam. I can't remember exactly the specs on the cam. Uh, I know it was a Summit Racing cam. Uh, and then we sent the transmission off to get completely rebuilt by a guy in uh, Indiana who specifically specializes in those front wheel drive transmissions that have either the LS4 in front of them or the supercharged 3.8s. It's been holding up good ever since. The transmission is supposed to be able to handle more power than the engine's even putting out right now. So I'm not worried about it blowing up like it did before. Before we did all that, it actually was blowing up. I'm not even exaggerating, like it, it was slipping and falling, falling on its face. So future intentions for the Monte Carlo, I would love to do a turbo kit for it because they do sell a turbo kit for the front wheel drive LS4s, you know, transversely mounted in the engine bay. They are very expensive and it's goofy because everything's so tight together and the way the exhaust is routed because it's, it's a V8, but it's this way instead of this way. So one exhaust runs over, over the transmission, back, meets the other manifold that comes out from the back, like a normal four cylinder or something like that. They meet and then go down. They do make a whole kit for it, so thankfully we have that. Now I'm not 100% sure on when this will be. Obviously we have more projects to do. We have to finish this car first before we, before we even do the other car. So that is the plan as of right now for the Monte Carlo. Now the next car I'm gonna talk about is my 2009 Audi Avant B8, um, A4, whatever you want to call it, wagon. Avant wagon, that's what that means, I guess. Um, plans for that car? I have like a short term and long term plan for that car. So short term would be get better wheels for it, stance it a little bit better, maybe get some camber in the rear as well, because the front right now has some camber, but the rear's pretty straight up and down. So. I would say I would like to do more camber in the rear, bigger wheels, it's got 17s on it now, I'm thinking probably either 18s or 19s. Maybe a newer style Avant wheel, I'm not 100% sure yet, uh, maybe something totally different, maybe like a custom wheel, I, I, I really don't know. That's a little ways down the road, that's probably before the Monte Carlo in terms of the wheels, but obviously after this. Engine wise, it has a 2 liter turbocharged four cylinder, not that good. It makes decent power for what it is, but it doesn't make enough power for it, simply put. I'd like at the end goal to make enough power to spin all four tires simultaneously, all right? Which means a different engine for sure, because I'm, I, I I'm not gonna put money into that four cylinder to make it make gobs of power because, well, they don't even sound that cool, really. That's a big thing to me. 
So I'm thinking either an LS swap, I know LS swap the world or whatever, but money to power ratio, an LS is one, it's kind of hard to beat. I was also thinking about maybe doing like the 4.8s. I think they're 4.8 Audi V8, dual overhead cam V8, uh, with the with a six speed behind it. They do sell a six speed for my current engine, but why would I do that if I'm planning on getting rid of the engine? So they do make, like I just said, a six speed for that 4.8. I think it's a 4.8. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but that would be awesome. But the thing is then I have to swap, I guess either way, I'd have to swap the entire, obviously engine control harness, the body control harness, um, everything, rewire the entire car at that point then. That one's gonna be a pain in the ass, honestly, but I think at the end of it, it would be very, very cool to see like that unique spin on it because not a lot of people really do wagons anymore, or at all in general. So it would really, it already kind of catches your eye because people are like, what the hell is that thing? But it'll even catch their eye more once that stuff's done to it. Again, future planning here. So don't get your hopes up anything too soon. We still have to finish this car. So now finally, we are gonna talk about this car right here. My 1980 Turbo Trans Am pace car prior pace car. Not gonna be a pace car anymore. The 1980s and the I think it was 79 through 81, two, I can't remember when the third gens came out, but like in that time, they had a different front nose on them, they had a different rear end to them, obviously hood, uh, fenders were different, no, were they? No, fenders were not different, but you get the gist, right? I'm going for the Bandit Trans Am look up front, so the 77 through 78 nose, I believe. Yeah, 76 had a different style nose. So that style nose, but the rear is going to be different. It's going to have uh, my taillights in it currently. Uh, I'll put a picture up here on the screen of uh, my 80 Trans Am taillights. Now the 78 taillights are completely different. They have a massive gaping hole in the middle of them for the license plate to go. Mine don't have that. They have a flush piece that matches somewhat what the taillights look like that covers the fuel, that acts as the fuel door pretty much. And I have a fiberglass bumper of a 78 Trans Am rear bumper cover. Now I'm gonna have to try to mold that into it because like I just said, the license plates were higher up on those so there's no cutouts for the license plate in that bumper. So I'm gonna have to come up with something custom with that. I don't know, I just want this thing to be a one-off so you know, it's not just, when you walk past it, it's not just another Trans Am. There's a lot of them, and I don't want that. Putting all this work into it, I do not want that at all. So apart from that, as it sits right now, she's ready to go into the paint booth, which is right behind us right now, and get her first coat of the polyester. It's kind of like a primer. The doors and the fenders have that. I've made videos about that in the past. It's the same stuff we're putting out all over the body. We just masked it off. Um, we gotta mask off the wheel, the wheel openings here and all that, and then some stuff up front. For the most part, everything's masked off. We are mini tubbing it, I know. More cutting, great. All right, I've cut half this car out pretty much at this point. But we are doing a mini tub kit. They're actually sitting up front. I'll show you guys that in a second. It's not a full tub, it's a mini tub. I wanna retain my back seat to a degree. It shouldn't get in the way too much I'm hoping. I just need to fit a bigger tire because you can see these wheel arches right here make it kind of difficult to lower it and have a you know a big a wide offset wheel because it's gonna hit right here before it can actually tuck up all the way because it's a it's a slope up instead of the Camaros where it's more of a it more bubbles out all the way and then there's like the the more flat wheel lip this one comes out, goes back in a little bit, then comes out and then goes back down. So, just what we gotta do to fit a bigger wheel and tire. Engine wise, I know it's been a big debate over pro probably a year by this point, if it's either gonna be an LT1 out of a fourth gen, you know, Firebird Camaro, that's been heavily modified, obviously. It's, uh, they put a 383 stroker kit in it. Uh, it's got different heads on it. 
We have a different intake manifold coming for it. Uh, it's got really beefy oil pan on it. So it's either that engine or there's a six a 60 LS iron block sitting over there. I have like a Cadillac or whatever. And I was thinking about doing that one. But I got some more thinking, you know, we're gonna spend all this money on this, this part of the car. It'd be nice just to put an engine that's already done. We bought the engine off of a guy in its exact state pretty much. So he built it for a project and he never got to it. We bought it from him. We also bought a T56 with the older style bell housing so it can actually mate to that engine. If I went with the uh, LS over there, I'd have to get a like an adapter plate for the bell housing that actually made up to the LS instead of the uh, LT. So there's that. One less thing I have to do, obviously, that has a clutch fork style throwout bearing. I'm gonna be upgrading it to a hydraulic throwout bearing because I mean, well, why not? Just get rid of the clutch fork. Uh, I'll have to go through that transmission probably a little bit. It's probably not too bad. Those are decently good transmissions, a T56. Um, obviously new clutch. I don't even think it came with a clutch. The engine didn't. No, the engine has no clutch on it. Or flex plate. Nope, nothing. Great, I gotta buy that too. This car has been a hodgepodge of do we wanna do this or this, or this or this, or this or this, or this or this. Do we wanna do the wheel tubs or not? I wanna cut more or not? I want a bigger wheel, but I don't wanna to have to cut. I guess I'm gonna have to cut because I want a bigger wheel. That is pretty much what we're gonna be going with on this car. We're going with the LT1 out of the fourth gen F bodies and that T56 that came with it. I'm not gonna go through the motor because like I said, they built it and I don't even think it's been ran. We, we ran a bore scope down it not too long ago, maybe like a year ago or something like that. To look inside the cylinders, there's no, not even like surface rust around the cylinders from you know moisture getting in there or anything. It's, I don't think they ever ran it. And the transmission has been used. It was a pull out of something, obviously, so I'll have to go through that. But apart from that, guys, once again, sincerely, I really deeply thank you guys for getting us to 1,000 subscribers. It's insane. I'm so happy that we did. Hopefully more and more people will come check out the channel and see what we're doing. I'm happy I can actually make videos over this stuff and you guys watch it. Honest to God, right? I enjoy making videos over this stuff. I enjoy working on cars. And the fact that you people like to watch it is just, that, that's, that's awesome. That's all I could really ever ask for. I mean, I can make content over something so goofy and some people will still wanna watch it. That's awesome. So, like I said before, thank you guys. Those are the updates on the channel. That's where I'd like to be within, well, the fleet that we have currently. So anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching the channel. Don't forget, to stay tuned for more videos coming over everything. Over the Trans Am, over the Monte Carlo. It won't be too much longer until that comes out of storage, obviously. It's winter time right now, so it can't be out and about because it's salt and it'll rust and turn into a sun chip. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see all you guys in the next one.